Tommy, you picked the same side that beat Falkirk 18 days ago. How confident are you that they might do the job for you tonight? Well, obviously, to pick the same team, Dave, you've got to be confident. But uh, I've got every confidence in the group of players we've got here. Uh, we know it'll be a difficult game. Rangers are a very good side. They're playing very well, very consistent. But we feel we're a good side and we're getting better. And we feel we're ready to meet the challenge tonight. It'll be a big night for Malky Mackay, who'll make his old firm debut. Have you had a few words with him? Well, if I could get him, Dave, he's locked himself in the toilet. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. I've just told him to go and enjoy it. I mean, it's a big occasion, Dave, and he's waited a long time to get an opportunity in a game like this. And it's entirely up to him. He want to go and enjoy it. He don't want to go and worry about games like this. He just want to go and take in everything that's, that's good about it. How frustrating has it been for you having to sit on the sidelines as Rangers stretch that lead at the top? That was difficult when you see them going and winning the games because, you know, you're going another three points further, although you've still got the game to play. But uh, to be fair, I feel it's been uh, beneficial to us because we've had a few knocks and wee strains and things like that and the 18 days has given us a chance to get the group back together in uh, 100% fitness again. Have you worked them hard to keep the fitness level up? Well, a bit of both, Davey. We've worked them hard and we've, we've given them a good rest as well. So, you know, hopefully it's came at the right time for us. And you feel they're in, they're in the right mood? Well, they're in the right mood, OK. Eh? Thanks, Tommy. Enjoy it. Thanks a lot, Davey. Walter, not surprisingly, the same side that beat Hibs on Saturday starts again for you tonight. Was there ever a, a temptation, given his record in these games, that you might have put Ali McCoy into this one? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the present moment substitute uh, would be his place. He's been out for a few weeks now, and that's just him just back. So I think substitute the best place for him tonight. Both yourself and Tommy Bunce have been saying that this isn't a championship decider tonight, but just how much of an influence do you think tonight's events might have on the eventual outcome? I think of a psychological influence more than anything else. I don't think anybody can say with the number of games to go that it would settle anything league-wise. But uh, it, has a, it gives a psychological boost if he can win this one as early um, as the season, especially just going into the new year. Well, you beat Hibs 7-0 on Saturday. You go into this one on the back of a 16-game unbeaten run. Do you feel the game is coming at just the right time for Rangers? Well, we are settling down a little bit with a lot of injury problems um, throughout the start of the season. Um, this is the third time in a row we've selected the same side, which is, I think is the first time that's happened for an awful long while. So we've played some of our best football in the last month or so, so I hope that that can continue this evening. There was a lot of talk a couple of weeks ago that perhaps this might be Celtic year. Do you feel your players have reacted to that? Well, I think they have. I mean, they've reacted to a few other teams who have challenged us in recent seasons as well. And I'm sure they'll react to Celtic. We've been here twice already this season and we've managed to win. So, again, we're hopeful that we can do it tonight. Thanks, Walter. If it's possible for a manager to enjoy this game, do that tonight. Thanks very much. A week ago, we were at Old Trafford, Manchester United against Newcastle. This seems very similar in the context of the uh, Bells Premier Division. I think it is. I think if, if Rangers were to take all three points tonight, it would be very, very difficult for Celtic to close that gap, and I think they know that. And I think they go into this game knowing exactly what Alex Ferguson's team knew when we were at Old Trafford, what, a week, ten days ago. They've just got to win the game, and I think that's what makes this New Year's game so special. But it's a game that Rangers traditionally have done very well in the past. Right, well, let's have a look at the teams for you. Celtic haven't played for 18 days. The holiday postponement stopping Peter Grant and John Hughes serving their suspensions, so they're still banned. But Tommy Burns has remembered the side which beat Paul Kirk last time out, and it is the same 11 tonight with particular spotlight on centre-back Malky Mackay, who starts a Premier game for only the fourth time. Nine Scots and two foreign forwards, Van Hoydonk from Holland and the German Andreas Tom. And two different formations we'll see tonight. And one or two things you can look from this Celtic formation. I've got them at 4-4-2 there. But watch for Phil O'Donnell because he's the one central midfield player that I think can get past the front two. When he does that, watch for John Collins just tucking into the midfield alongside Paul McStay. Now when they do that, if they, they can get the ball to McStay, if they can get the ball to Collins in those areas, those two have certainly got the ability to pass their way through Rangers and cause problems. When Collins goes in there, look for Tosh McKinley coming down on the left-hand side, giving him width on the outside. They've got natural width with Simon Donnelly on the right, so they've no problem there. Pierre Van Hoydonk will play the front wall, but Tom drops off, he'll drop off there. He'll drop off on the right-hand side, he'll drop off deep. Just wander about, try and get himself on the ball. 7-0 on Saturday, and Walter Smith names the same side, though he was tempted to include Alec Cleland to give the team more natural balance on the right. With Petric, Solenko and Laudrup, Rangers a little more continental than Celtic, not to mention the one England international involved tonight who's achieved his usual prominence in the huge publicity prior to this eagerly awaited match. 
Now there's been a lot of talk about the the three at the back, the centre backs there, and I think there might be a big onus on them tonight. When I look at that Ranger set, I see people who want to go forward, people on wide. Charlie Miller wants to go forward, Gaskin wants to go forward, Loudrup wants to go forward. There's a great danger that they may leave the back three a little bit exposed at times, so perhaps someone has to be a little bit disciplined. When I talked about Collins and McStay's passing, I think for Rangers we've got two. And if they can get the ball to Gascoigne, if they can get the ball to Loudrop, those are two players who, maybe not so much with their passing, but with their ability to run with the ball. Run, commit and beat players can cause problems. Brian Loudrop, you never know where he's going to end up. He'll end up right, he'll end up left, any side that he wants. And with Salenko and Jury in good goal scoring form, this is a threatening looking Rangers side. Well, the rain is falling heavily. It's been a mild day in Glasgow, a dry day until about an hour before the kickoff. So there's another element to the evening. Wouldn't be the same, the New Year's game, Mark, if it wasn't pouring the rain in Glasgow. There would be something missing. It is crunch time, you feel, at Celtic Park. The two great Glasgow rivals, both unbeaten in the league since September. Celtic with a couple of games in hand. Rangers with this eight-point lead that they want so much to stretch to 11. I think the one thing that doesn't worry me about the game because teams can never play for draws. I don't think it draws a bad result for either team. I think Rangers would be fairly happy to come here, pick up a point, and Celtic would believe that even a point still keeps them in touch, means that they're only, if they won the two games in hand, would only still be two points behind Rangers, with a lot of football still to be played. And I just hope that the sides don't come in with that negative thought. Well, that wonderful north stand on the far side to our cameras is uh, a monument to the modernization at Celtic not just modernizing the facilities but you feel there's a more modern attitude behind the rebuilding Celtic accused for years of living with their heads in the sand but they're trying to be progressive and reach the standards that have been set so spectacularly across town at Ibrox not a bad start it's my first live viewing of that lovely stand over there it really is huge and if we can take that all the way around it will make what we know here in Glasgow is Parkhead it will make it a wonderful stadium well it hasn't brought Celtic a great deal of luck in the two old firm games that have been played here since the stand was open Rangers came here and won in the League Cup they also won the opening old firm encounter in the league this season Well, they're calling this the most important old firm derby for years. The two captains have been through this plenty of times before. Richard Goff of Rangers, Paul McStay of Celtic. Here they come. Well, the fans here speak for themselves. It needs no extra comment from me. Amazing atmosphere. It's a fixture that speaks for itself. Celtic against Rangers. But there will be a, a sorrowful note struck before the kickoff because 25 years ago at New Year the Ibrox disaster in which 66 football fans lost their lives the Celtic chief executive and managing director Fergus McCann and the two managers will announce a minute silence in memory of those who died 
25 years ago. Well, the passion will be put on hold for a moment as Les Mottram, tonight's referee, calls the players to line up as for the kickoff, and then there will be the address here from Fergus McCann. Rangers to kick off. It's been the deepest divide in British football for more than 100 years. So often they've met as the top two in the table, but not often enough recently for Celtic, who are desperate to crack this fantastic run of championships for their fiercest rivals. Patrick trying to be calm Not an easy thing to do in the opening 10-15 minutes of an old firm match Put your foot in it Gascoigne trying to run from deep Also a difficult thing to do in the opening moments of a match of this intensity and John Collins is hurt, briefly. Gascoigne's header. Celtic were holding and one or two arms up 
for offside against Selenko. The ball didn't get that far forward. It's forward now for the home side with Van Hoydon. Looks stay. Rather brushing Goff aside. Came behind the Dutchman. O'Donnell's foul. Followed by more of the same from Boyd. I think what's good about the referees, Mark, they're so experienced in these ties that normally you'd expect a booking very early in the game, but they know, I think, that everyone's got to settle down. So, eight points the difference, 11, and the rest will probably be waving Rangers goodbye as they would be expected to steam on towards another title. Celtic have a greater cutting edge about them this season. They've won seven more games than at this stage a year ago when they were really the draw specialists. Played forward by Ferguson. And the flag was up. The one thing that the three centre-backs that Rangers have well built this season on I've got to be careful about it Phil O'Donnell's got a great engine in the centre of midfield he's a lad that really loves to run forward without the ball and one of them has got to be aware of that man's running McNamara headed away by McLaren Talk about Celtic doing better this season. Rangers, believe it or not, are six points up on their total after the same number of games a year ago. And uh, traditionally, they come strong over the second half of the season. The best uh, start that Walter Smith can remember as a manager. Here's Collins. Tosh McKinley at left back doing well to get past Ferguson. And Petric, but he carried it just too far. Well, that was the area that Walter Smith was toying with, I'm sure, of changing. That's Ian Ferguson in this right back area. He had Scott Alec Cleland, who's substitute tonight. But Ian Ferguson's a great competitor. I'm not so sure how good he is as a tackler, as a defender. And perhaps Gordon Petric just might have a bit of a job on in this right hand side if Tosh McKinley continues to skip by him as he did then. Kenley's header. Made a late surge into the international ranks this season, Tosh McKinley, having uh, joined Celtic and increased his profile in doing so. Well, the New Year derby has been something of a nightmare for Celtic followers in recent times they haven't won one since 1988 the last championship year Hope to run of Rangers victories in this uh, fixture which was played at Ibrox at this time last year finished 1-1 it was uh, crackling with uh, atmosphere and attacking invention as uh, more and more of the matches are these days it's Touched touch by Van Hoydon Tom was flagged offside and as Andy says it was close oh McLaren had dropped off See in the middle of the picture, he is just off. About a yard off, but it's a very tight one. Petric, who very nearly joined Celtic from uh, Dundee United. And Hoydon tries the shot and it was a skimmer and it needed stopping. Well, I'm not sure Goran wasn't caught out. I'm not so sure whether Rangers are being brave or fully. Shelley in an old firm match. Even in the defensive third, they're looking to pass balls in. As he did to Charlie Miller, really, a hopeless pass in him, he's back to play. He was hounded out of it very quickly. And Celtic were able to get a shot in by Hondo. He hit it really well. Here's Lauder, fed by Solenko. Corner to Rangers. In the section of the ground where the Rangers fans are gathered, around 4,000 of them. Petrus has come up, and Goff as well, it's Richard Goff, who's beaten to it. Well, next day was 
that's indicating to the referee that he didn't intend to bring Solenko down, but bring him down he certainly did. Well, I think it was a bit theatrical from Oleg Solenko. McNamara's header. Van Hoydok. Celtic have another player hurt. It's Donnelly, I think, who's uh, in need of attention. But Les Mottram lets the game go on, and Celtic aren't bashful in that respect. Tom at the far post well that's the threat this is the area where Celtic should exploit Ian Ferguson attracted infield again you can see how far infield Ferguson is he can't get out to Tosh McGinley plays a great ball and that's a wonderful cross I think Andreas Tom will be a little disappointed that he hasn't made Andy Gorham do a bit of work the cross deserved a better header and I think we'll see McKinley come into that area more and more Certainly as he's on the side with his manager and his coach Billy Starkar, I'm sure they'll be saying to him, you've got to get down there, it'll be there for you. Simon Donnelly, a Celtic player. His father was on the books of Rangers for a while. It'll be an interesting family tonight watching... Solenka. Here's McKinley. Petric. Gascoigne making a little bit of room for himself where there seemed to be very little. Deciding not to take the throw. Just a little bit right side at the moment, Rangers. So often I've looked up and I've got the ball on this right side and both Laudro. On that left side with David Robertson in acres of space so someone could just look up and change the play quickly. Nicely done by Collins. Tom Chaser. McLaren gets across in front of him. He used his body well to make sure he got the ball. Haven't seen too much of Gordon Jury so far. He's been in exceptional form. His best spell since he returned to Scotland from Tottenham. Four of the seven goals past the Jim Layton and Hibbs. Last time out for Rangers. Celtic just bursting the play. Two and a half weeks sidelined because of the uh, wintry weather up here over the holiday period. We can find it hard at times to find training venues. Next step. McKinley again setting off down the left. Collins takes over and looks the other way. Donnelly, O'Donnell, McNamara on the right side, not the right kind of cross, McLaren got the ball stuck under a foot just for a second, not the longest clearance from Robertson. There's a pity about the cross coming in from the right because the rest of the move was one to enjoy, it was a super patient build up from Celtic, when they had the chance to deliver well the cross wasn't a great one. His boy advancing. The other number two is Ian Ferguson. Next day. Into play with Andres Tom. Next day forging on himself. O'Donnell's in there, a midfield man with an eye for goal. Laubrup. He's just getting back to his best after a couple of months out earlier in the season with an ankle problem that's that ball mark that change of player was talking about well it was not forward uh, into, uh, no it's not offside it's... oh and Mackay could have put that into his own goal well the flag was up and Celtic stopped everyone stopped for a moment Well, I'm not sure what happened there. You and I stopped. The Celtic players stopped. Oleg Salenko stopped. Everyone saw the flag. Well, that would have been something that had Rangers scored there. Well, you feel in these old firm games you're watching history in the making. Every uh, chapter in this particular story is packed with thrills and drama. And a most unusual event there. 
Well, let's watch it again as the ball sticks. Ian Ferguson plays the ball through now. The only thing I can suggest is that Les Mottram has said that it was a deflection off the Celtic player. He made the tackle just as Ferguson played it through. But look at Solenko, he stopped. Everyone stopped. Flag went up. How that has it got in his own net? Well, I don't think Marky Mackay knows. Well, the linesman, Alistair Hewitt, was overruled by Les Mottram. I think Les is fortunate, the referee, because that, that would not have been a good decision. McNamara. Labrook. Oh, and Jury nipping in. Flag is up again. And Labrook's not wasting any time. He's not scoring. He, he wasn't going to hesitate this time, just in case Les Mottram had play on again but he hadn't well they're holding the line Celtic they're taking a chance on this offside well it's working it's good Gordon Jury wins the ball Celtic have got a good line Loud up offside no doubt there I always think it's a dangerous policy holding the line that high up the pitch Van Hoydok Goff went well with him and got a foot in Robertson suspicion of uh, Donnelly jumping in to make the challenge but Celtic were not pulled back by a blast on the referee's whistle jury Kicking Gascoigne's favour. Just to go back to that offside that wasn't given, Andy. Did you notice who played the ball forward for Solenko down the left hand side, inside left hand? Ian channel? Ferguson. Correct. From the right back area. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was saying about he's, he's so keen to get involved in the game, he's taken himself everywhere. Well, you can imagine if Rangers lost possession quickly and Celtic then transferred the ball to this near side. Petrich takes the free kick. Probably underneath it was Boyd. Collins. He's been uh, such a mainstay of Craig Brown's Scotland team. Next day. Tom's had a lively start to the game, but he couldn't quite reposition them. The problem that the Celtic midfield three are given Ian Ferguson is they are three against two if he stays wide. Paul Gascoigne and Charlie Miller have Paul McStay, Phil O'Donnell and John Collins to mark and Ian Ferguson I think feels it's his job to tuck in Boyd on Robertson Brook is out well he's let a few go let's watch him I don't think that tackle from Tom Boyd is any worse than any that have gone previously but what, 15 minutes into the game he probably feels well, now's the time Tom Boyd is booked Solenko has made space for himself and the danger was recognised just in time by O'Donnell good play from Phil O'Donnell, how important it was that he checked back in Get given against Goff. Both managers act with great dignity in this uh, football crazy city. Tommy Burns, Celtic through and through. Miller losing out to McStay. Did Gascoigne a taste of his own medicine and he ran away from Gascoigne but the Rangers man was aware that Robertson was there to make the challenge so just two or three times though the balls were played into Charlie Miller with his back to play and he's been just a little bit slow and getting caught in possession well these are always uh, tremendous occasions 
but the backdrop of that stand on the far side is just adding to it and the acoustics are splendid but nothing between the sides at the moment for all the early endeavour and the tigerishness of the tackling Ferguson losing out O'Donnell takes it on Celtic have got a lot of players for and Tom great stop by Gorham breaks for Donnelly to play it back in again or think twice about doing it and he delayed too long now once again Rangers are grateful to a fine fine save from the goalkeeper that was a magnificent stop to what was a flowing Celtic move great run from Tom great ball from O'Donnell after that piercing run and you thought this is it first goal in the match but Andy Gorham had other ideas Goff, but no uh, control in the pass, went straight to McNamara, McStay, McLaren stopping it, getting through to Van Hoydock, Solenko, Mackay uh, sends it over the top, well it gives us a chance to admire that, again O'Donnell makes this run, now just watch Tom make this run in between players here, makes a wonderful run there he goes and the ball's just about to be slid in through there he's onside you can see that quite clearly look how quickly Gorham's off his line spreads himself so well he makes an excellent save Gordon Marshall pressed by Gordon Jurek Miller Celtic throw. Well, there's been precious little old firm joy for Celtic so far this season. Though they played a full part in that uh, remarkable 3 3 draw in November at Ibrox. In recent times, playing at home hasn't been a great advantage in the old firm contest. going to take the free kick Rangers again waiting for Richard Goff Goff three it's offside Salenko's offside Mark the flag's up he won't be happy with his teammate Salenko drifted into an offside position total lack of concentration you watch him here there he goes he's in the air he's in that offside position the flag's up and I think Salenko's a happy man that Gordon Marshall makes an equally good save from Richard Goss here. Because I don't think his captain would have been pleased about that. Just not thinking. Is he Ukrainian? What is he, Mark? Solenko, was he from? Well, he got his goals for Russia, Russia. in the uh, World Cup. Petric playing safe. Most famous five goals for the World Cup record. Some talk that he might be... Uh, leaving Rangers who have a, a Brazilian on the verge of being signed Jardel and reports that Bobby Robson in Portugal is interested in Oleg Solenko who had a good uh, time in Spain with Valencia the rain continues to fall but It is not interrupting the momentum of another mega contest here. 20 minutes gone. But Patoa, Andy Gorham, Andreas Tom would have given Celtic the lead. And another Celtic move that originated down their left-hand side. O'Donnell moving infield after Ferguson had had a problem to put Tom through. who's kept Packy Bonner out this season next day Mackay who's 
started life working in a bank, playing part-time. But he'll be hoping he doesn't have to go back to that uh, profession for a while. Ferguson going with him and fouling him. And they're still trying to get Tosh McKinley in here, but what Rangers have done, they've called on Gordon Jury to take that responsibility. I don't think Celtic will be too disappointed with that. They'd much rather see Jury in the right back position than up front, popping shots at goal. Petric brought down O'Donnell. Celtic had a free kick within range of Gordon's goal coming up to the halfway mark in the first half Collins takes it can't bypass the wall and the player who gave away the free kick stopped it Laudrup he's leaving Celtic in his wake Brian Laudrup in the end under pressure well, and not the boy. finish to go with the fantastic ambition in the run. I thought he was away. When he gets past Boyd, just about the halfway line here, just as he slips, I thought he was going to go away from him. But I have to give Tom Boyd credit. Look at the way he caught up Laudrup. And I think that's what made him take the shot earlier. I think he would have loved to have driven into the box. He should have driven into the box. But he wasn't able to because Tom Boyd was threatening him all the time and made him take the shot earlier than he wanted. Laudrup's only league goal this season came against Celtic in the 3-3 draw. Recently voted yet again Denmark's footballer of a particular year. He has been saying that he'd like to play in England before his career comes to a conclusion. to reach Laudrup Finley needed again after Boyd's mistake well he had a ball on Gordon Jury as soon as he picked it up all legs of was trying to have a word with him because he had a great opportunity just to slide him through straight through the middle he elected to run with the ball one of Celtic's most famous fans Rod Stewart oh for musical fame who would love to have been a footballer as well and is still playing the game at his age and has got his own pitch to play on presumably his own ball as well quite a few but it looks like things beforehand betting if you missed our feature pre-game getting some uh, coaching from Dean Holdsworth these days Fairly by McKinley. That's playing Lyra for me. The way somebody fizzes a ball at him and his control's just instant and he's past McKinley. All he can do is haul the Dane back. And no surprise that Les Modrum reaches for his boot. Second caution for a Celtic defender. McKinley and Boyd with their names recorded. Free kick earned by Laudrup, taken by Gascoigne. Well, some extravagant bend on it has kept it in after I think Celtic felt that they uh, had been given a reprieve and Gascoigne had put it straight out of play. Coaching 
staff and get their message across <laughs> in this din. Beats me. Trying again. Well, his first season, last season, had a happy conclusion. Celtic winning a trophy for the first time for six years, the Scottish Cup. Boyd and McKinley got a bit close to each other. And uh, Lambert got too close to the touchline in the Rangers' point of view. There's as much activity goes on in the touchline in the two, two dugouts as there is on the pitch. It must be horse at the end of that. And for what? You can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> Robertson. Well, you've been involved in these games as a player, Andy. Is there any need for managers to speak to the players before the game? Before the game, yeah. not to wind them up, not to get them going. I think there's yeah, an example. What would I think is experienced many, many of these when it was Graham Souness's assistant and now his manager on his own right. I think he realises that you can't get any messages across. You see all that's got to be said beforehand, and then change one or two things at half time if need be. But I agreed with the boys in the studio before when he talked about two players at Celtic would miss John Hughes and Peter Grant I think they're built for this type of game they're made for this type of game yes they're both suspended this is Miller well on both sides at the moment the uh, pitch a little bit narrow for the players but it's hard to find room when players are covering the ground so urgently to make the challenges. McLaren. Not the tidiest piece of defending he'll ever come up with. Two Celtic players going for the same ball. And Hoydock's header. And uh, Selenko actually got caught by a Celtic leg as the ball was cleared a moment or two ago. Taking the wind out of his sails temporarily. McKay. Collins had the scamper to get there first. McKinley. It's static uh, ahead of him for a moment, but uh, they tried to work the left hand side. And they've done it again. Collins back to McKinley. And all David Robertson can do is play safe and concede the corner. Wasn't a bad ball. But this has been the area that's been Celtic's profitable area in the first half. The opening half of this near side, the left side, McKinley and Collins in tandem together. It was super play from John Collins, the way he held off Gascoigne and then just popped a super pass off to Tosh McKinley. And Gorham has to save right on the line from Van Hoydog. Well, I think he was happy that this header just drops. No real power in it. And that's the thing that helps Andy Gorham. Van Hoydonk goes in, gets the header, but can only just drop it down in front of the goalkeeper. Look at that. Look at the amount of contact that's going on there with Petric. Donnelly. Well, it was a ball that caused Richard Goff all sorts of alarm. He felt he had to play it. Van Hoydonk was coming in alongside him. He did have to play it. It's as simple as that. You can't leave this for your goalkeeper. If he did, Van Hooy don't would have given Celtic the lead. The side second in the table, pressing the league leaders. Let's not forget the context of this clash. Collins takes. Jury, Solanka. who's got the perfect equipment for the counter-attack. Solanko and McKinley has to cook it away. It doesn't get very far. Miller. <laughs> well, 
despite that calm air <laughs> that brought you a few moments ago. <laughs> Walter Smith could not control his emotions from the higher vantage point. That was a silly free kick for Tosh McKinley to give away. Ian Ferguson was going nowhere, he had him faced away from his goal and all he's done is invite pressure on his defence. Petrich settles to the throw. Not totally happy with what he's doing, the Rangers manager. Goff though with a biting flick, Jury. Potentially damaging clash. McNamara fell by Mackay, his teammate, incidentally. He wasn't half fell as well. Well, McNamara's got eyes on the ball. Both have to be fair, but McNamara's going to head it. Mackay's going to fall here. There was only one winner in winning the ball and there was only one person going to come off second best and that was Jackie McNamara. Well, there are enough ways to get bruised in this match without that happening. It is an exhausting encounter and that's just when you're watching. Celtic players collide they're trying so hard it means so much not just for the local pride that we all know about but Celtic want to win a championship again they've not done it since 1988 they've not won the new year old firm derby since 1988 two goals from Frank McAvenny eight years ago I think Paul McShee's asking, is that tackle's no worse than the one Tom Boyd was booked for? And I think that's what Paul McShee's probably saying to Les Mottram. McDonough's always ahead of Ian Ferguson, always winning the ball. Collins takes. And Hoedon coming in. O'Donnell is there. Knocked away by Miller. The jury. That was nicely done. Lenko was offside, had the ball got beyond point. Next football for you on Sky Sports, involving the FA Cup this weekend. On Saturday, extended highlights of Manchester United against Sunderland at 6 o'clock. And our live game on Sunday, we start at midday, Derby County against Leeds United. Third round of the FA Cup. I have a feeling this will be a good thing. I don't think there's any escape for David Robertson. Paul McStay does really well. Just nips it past him. Completely fools David Robertson. And it's going on for four years ago that Robertson was sent off in an old 
firm clash in the Scottish Cup. But it's yellow, not red here tonight. It's won by Ferguson, helped on by Jury. Petric. They couldn't get there. Pass from Miller, Loudrup against Boyd. Donnelly trying to give him some help, but Boyd didn't need any help. Boyd again. Tom Van Hoydock. Wanting support in field through the centre, and it wasn't quite where Van Hoydock played the ball. Again, that was a penny. It was a great run from Tom Boyd. After taking the ball off of Brian Loudrock, really deep in his own half. He wasn't happy just to pop it off and stop. Carried on with the move. Rangers have lost sight of Andreas Tom for a moment. Donnelly. Trying to get it back to Collins. Some uh, tidy play in there by Ferguson. I think they've been a little unlucky in the last couple of minutes, Celtic. Two good attacks. And the one thing that let them down was just lack of bodies. As Andreas Tom went to cross the ball only, Van Hoydonk and Donnelly managed to get themselves in advanced positions. As you see here, as they pop it off, now he's got a great position. But look how many blue shots compared to green and white. Totally outnumbered. It was always difficult for Tom to pick out someone who would be free. Celtic again with O'Donnell very conspicuous Tom here's Donnelly Tom now Celtic as you would expect forcing the play theirs is the greater need for the extra points tonight I think they've had the better of the opening Celtic. Certainly the possession shows that. But look how deep Gordon Jury is. Who's that heading the ball out from the right back position? It's the Rangers striker. The guy picked the play up front. I think Tommy Burns will be quite happy to see that. So if Gordon Jury's that deep, he ain't going to score a goal. That's a certainty. Stay it has got tried to slide it into the centre midfield where Ian Ferguson is definitely deployed now. And Jury in the right back area again as Celtic build down the Rangers left or try to. McLaren across to clear. And Jury's looking at the bench and gesticulating as if uh, he's taking up your point, Andy, as to what am I doing here? I've got I've, I've every sympathy with him. But it is a problem. It's been a problem I've noticed since the opening minutes. And one that's got to be addressed, they just can't allow them to run free into that. The only other thing you can do is say to Brian Waldrop, you come and play this side. And play from there. But I think it's something that they'll certainly be talking about in the dressing room at half-time. But there's a big five minutes coming up. Celtic have got a good head of steam up. And they'll be anxious to try and nick one in the next five minutes. Rangers, on the other hand, will be keen to get a half-time level. They've been saying about Celtic, they don't win the derbies when it really matters. Well, this one really does matter. They're piling in now. and Van Hoydonk, the object of the Rangers' wrath. Petric on uh, the ground, I think it was, who kicked out. Well, they're having a right tussle. Van Hoydonk and Petric when the, any cross is coming into the box. Look at... Gordon Petric when he gets the grip of Van Hoydock all the time it's coming and he's really taking a chance you can see the wild kick there I think it's just as well for him that Les Mottram didn't see that but he's taking a chance because he isn't half getting a grip of Van Hoydock's jersey every time the ball's coming in the referee sees that well he's got a lot of weight and height to throw around Van Hoydonk sometimes you feel he doesn't do that and here's Solenko 
trying to run past Boyd, who concedes the corner. Again, it was a glorious opportunity for him just to roll Charlie Miller in. He broke from midfield. The two or three times when Rangers have had the opportunity to play passes, players have run with the ball. Well, Rangers have broken free momentarily from the pressure. Gascoigne's corner. Been knocked by Tom. Patrick Slow gets it back towards Jury. Seven is Miller. Solanka tried to uh, just touch it off to Gascoigne. He went the other way. And uh, well offside, Van Hoydog. Petric, Gascoigne, and it's beautifully done, can't quite say the same about Ferguson's attempt to play it to Rangers' advantage further forward, three minutes plus stoppage time left in the first half. Rangers have struggled really to make much impact in the last half, the choice of ball, a lack of ball, has let them down in the first half. Celtics have looked much more dangerous in the attacking thirds. McNamara nipping in. Tussle with Gascoigne. Fuel the flames of anger in the crowd. And now Petric and Van Hoydok. Well, this is really going to require some action from the referee. Well, I thought this was the other way. Petric attracts him and then the arm goes out. I think that's the free kick. And there's not an awful lot happens after that. Van Hoydok does nothing wrong for me. Petric runs the ball out of play. That's either a free kick or a throw into Celtic. The Rangers get the decision. And Van Hoydok gets the lecture when Petric really looked the culprit as he was a few minutes ago in the penalty area when he kicked out. There's Mottram, the Scotland's refereeing representative in the last World Cup, of course. Petric takes the free kick. Jury shot. Now, there was never in a position for me to get that shot. Enough power, enough control, it was far too high. Had other options on. But again, the thing that's let Rangers down has been their choice in the last stop. As the ball just drops down, it's far too high. Look at the top of the screen. You could pick out Selenko, you could have picked out David Robertson. He opted for the most difficult thing. But I suppose in the back of a four-goal haul in the, your last game, you are going to take a chance and shoot. Well, as they line up Rangers uh, at the restart, Ian Ferguson has switched back, Gordon Jury is through the centre again. Of course, one option we haven't mentioned, uh, and is Alec Clowen, the substitute. Could get him on and play him in his natural position. Next day. Now top. He's lost it to Gascoigne. Celtic having to play a bit on the retreat. Hasn't happened too often. They've got the ball again at the free kick as we go into stoppage time. Such a big night as a barometer of Celtic's improvement this season. The league table shows that they are better, but are they good enough to dethrone the champions who have had the title seven times in a row? Celtic so proud that they're the club who've won it nine times in succession in the past, in the uh, 60s and 70s. That's going already into the apology. But it's not going to be enough. 
Well, he's been uh, determined to curb his bookings for descent. But uh, midfield men are expected to tackle. And if you get it wrong these days, you run the risk of getting booked. He has been booked. Well, I had a lot of sympathy as most other people when he's breaking against Hibs at the weekend. But, uh, well, you can't argue with that one. to Mackay around the edge of the penalty area well, that came back to McLaren and Gorham was worried about handling it and giving away a free kick there have been a lot of free kicks in this first half Rangers think it's been taken Lavrup thinks it's been retaken Marshall had to make a save but it's all irrelevant I'll have to go back to where the referee is standing. Quite rightly too. It was taken about 15, 20 yards away from the incident. Well, if he's blown his whistle, there's more trouble. But you're not going to hear it if you're five yards away from him. Never mind 50. But what about Andy Gordon there when he had to deal with that back pass? What a cool head he showed to take it on his chest and volley it when he was under severe pressure. There's a cool chest and a clear head to recognise the threat. It's nil-nil at half-time. Gorham has played well. Celtic have forced the pace of the game. Plenty of stoppages. But Rangers, the league leaders, haven't conceded a goal to the side standing second at half-time at Celtic Park. It's Celtic nil, Rangers nil. Nil-nil, both sides level in that they've lost only one league game all season long. Celtics one defeat here, two Rangers of course, back in September. The champions had their colours lowered for the only time in the league a week earlier, beaten at home by Hibs. Well, they certainly got their revenge for that last Saturday. But we've seen very little of that attacking panache from Walter Smith's side to this point. Celtic start the second half. Well, no changes in personnel, but I feel sure that in the Rangers dressing room there was an awful lot of talk of the right-hand side, the side that Tosh McKinley enjoyed a lot of success first half. We must have talked about doing something to solve the problems. certainly been back to his very best this season he's had a lot of injury problems over the last couple of years of course here's David Robertson oh Malky Mackay certainly hasn't looked out of place in this company Donnelly doing well there's no one uh, Really helping him to the left, coming from a deeper position was the willing O'Donnell. McNamara outside him. O'Donnell goes for glory himself, touched onto the post. Well, what a save again from Andy Gordon. Well, that was just typical Phil O'Donnell. O'Donnell again. It's as close as Celtic have come. What a run, though, he puts in here. It drives that Rangers set of defenders. And Andy Gore, make no mistake, he gets fingertips to that. If he does it, the Rangers are one down. It's a magnificent save from the Rangers goalkeeper to deny Phil O'Donnell the opening goal. Kai. Going to 
Anderson uh, trying to restrict Collins, and Collins is taking him infield from time to time. Louder. Robertson. Boyd showing his athleticism again, but he didn't deal with the ball. Now comes Marshall. That was a decent run. Loudrup and Robertson for one of the few times in the match. Combining well down the left side. McNamara. And Hoydok. Gascoigne trying to get free. Jury. Robertson pointing where he wanted Selenko to move to. Selenko's header is a shrewd one. Miller. And Mackay stood his ground again. Well, here are Rangers. Eight points clear at the top of the table. And uh, I saw a survey amongst their players that was published the holiday period. Who was the best player up to this point so far? And Andy Gorham got the vote. So, in those circumstances, you can... Uh, see what a contribution he's made so often in games not like this one but games where Rangers have the ball for long periods and maybe has to make one save at a crucial time in a match and he invariably comes up with it Miller's he's pass he's made two now Mark in a very important game for Rangers Not the tallest of goalkeepers either, but he did manage to get that frame of his stretched to its maximum. So he got the weirdest fingertip touch on it. Dare I say that he learned his trade in England? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Tom. Maybe more work for Andy Gore. Donnelly. Tom. That's an unfair turn by O'Donnell. A bit expensive golf and he's penalised for it. But Phil O'Donnell, who loves to drive on from midfield in the manner in which his shot was turned onto the post by the excellent Gorham. Collins. Once again, sorry Matt, once again I have to say Celtic calling the tune at the beginning of the second half. They've been sound at the back, they've been inventive in midfield, and they've looked threatening up front. But they haven't scored. And you and I have now covered maybe half a dozen, eight of these old firm derby matches. And an awful lot of them have followed these lines when Celtic, in my opinion, have been the better side for huge spells in the game. But haven't managed to get a goal when they've been playing well. Donnelly. Donnelly again. McLaren wasn't the most authoritative clearance Donnelly alive to the prospects at the throw from Collins Gascoigne in the way McStay taking over that's a good play by Ferguson but Rangers have lost it again says Les Mottram but there is with that free kick to Loudrup and Rangers Robertson has tried to show adventure down the left it's certainly a strong suit for him and the system is tailored for him to push on but <laughs> where's the man on the right not there for Loudrup Here's Robertson well forward. Selenko. 
challenge is back pedal. Collins into Donnelly. Tom to the left, Van Hoydonk through the middle. Donnelly claims a free kick and gets one. A little generous. I thought he was running out of steam, Simon Donnelly there. He was running out of ideas. He was looking to play Pierre Van Hoydonk in here. I don't see Charlie Miller do too much wrong there. Except put him under a bit of pressure, but the free kick's been given. And I don't imagine you pull your centre forward out of the firing line to a free kick 30 yards from goal if he ain't going to hit it. But you never know, it might be a decoy. It's not, it's Van Hoydonk. And the Gorham, uh, the miss sort of form, he needs to do just a bit more than that. It wasn't a bad try. Well, it's hit with plenty of power and it's hit with plenty of pace. But it's from so far out. Andy Gorham gets a good long look at it. Look at that. Good long look at it. And it's quite a comfortable save. You know, 10 yards nearer, it might well have been a different matter. Petric. Crowd trying to influence the linesman. But the flag stayed down. Miller letting it run, but Solanko wasn't quite behind him. And Hoydonk was waiting, McLaren wasn't, Gascoigne. Solenko. Still Solenko. Marshall shows his calibre in the Celtic goal. But Gascoigne's had a right goal at Solenko. I think he feels he's provided him with the best chance Rangers have created today. I thought when he tucked inside here he was going to hit it. But he elected to come back on his left. And I tell you, we've talked about Andy Gorham making important saves. That's a hell of a big save from Gordon Marshall. Stood big, didn't commit himself, didn't go to ground early. And was able to make himself a big target. And Salenko found him. Gordon Marshall, a long time ago, failed to make the grade with Rangers. Crowd not happy with uh, the decision against O'Donnell. But there's that warning to Celtic and they've seen it happen to them so often that going down to the sucker punch late on when they've dominated matches most notably in recent times in that League Cup fourth round match back in September and a certain Alastair McCoist was responsible for their gloom haven't seen him yet tonight but he's available on the bench Petric Gascoigne made it his. Ferguson. Away, thoughtfully by Mackay. To Tom. Celtic trying to catch up with him in the shape of O'Donnell. And McKinley down the left. Tom can leave it to the left back. Now it is Andreas Tom. Oh, Van Hoydonk! Got any touch and he scores. It was a brilliant run from Van Hoydonk. And a great ball from Tom. It deserved better. It was a super break. Now watch your run. It's a beautifully dinked cross. Now any touch and he scores. I don't know whether he does. It looks like he misses it totally. He does. And look how close this is to dropping in at the far post. It's a foot away. And that's a real let off for Rangers. And another chance goes begging for Celtic. Any touch and it's in at that back post. Well, he's got a good record in the big games, Van Hoydonk. He scored on his Celtic debut, scored in his first Celtic Cup tie, scored in his first Old Firm game, and of course he got the goal that won the Scottish Cup in May. They need a goal from him tonight, or from someone, to peg back Rangers. The status quo would suit Walter Smith if it finished level tonight, much more than Tommy Burns. Stay. Tom. Here's Collins. Donnelly's taken up an interesting position. He didn't want to shoot. Trying with that angle, it would have to be a pass of rare precision to get it into the area that uh, O'Donnell was running towards. Just talking, we see the 
Tommy Burns here saying wide, and he did have a runner, Jackie McNamara, provided him with the option wide on the right. That was certainly the ball. Jury. Gordon Jury's been out of Scotland's plans for a while, but he's certainly attracting uh, the attention of Craig Brown with his goal scoring feats in recent weeks. McNamara with the throw. Off his international days seem to be well and truly over. Although he's still such a strong leader for his club. Gascoy, cleverly wide to Robertson. Plenty of blue jerseys forward. Gascoy loves to take them on in these circumstances, and the pass was a very perceptive one, but Solenko. It was on the same wavelength, it was offside. I don't know how much he thinks about it, Oleg Solenko, at times when he gets in these advanced areas. At times he just, he just drifts offside needlessly. You know, he's looking at two Celtic players in front of him. No reason for him to be in advance of them. Well, the goalkeeper's... Uh, have done their bit so far in this New Year's Old Firm derby. But Gorham might be threatened again by Tom. There was uh, no return pass on. Donnelly hadn't quite seen the opportunity to really accelerate. And there were a lot of Rangers players around him, perhaps barring the way. For the majority of the game, Rangers have done that quite well. They've got plenty of blue jerseys back when they need them. Well, the pass from Miller and uh, Jury trying to use his well-documented pace. And Mackay was very capable in his defending again. It's O'Donnell. Oh. Well, he's the problem. That's what Saladon is all about, my opinion. I saw this lad play at Motherwell many years ago. There was a flick by Gascoigne and a problem for Celtic in the shape of Brian Laudrup. And once more, the attentions of Tom Boyd enough to put him off at the critical moment. And once again, that lack of fitness that Charlie Nicholas talked about at halftime, possibly showing there. Game spread over the last few seconds. And Hoydock leaving it for Tosh McKinley. Fine clearance by Goff, unflappable. Jury. Chance to attack Celtic again. Stay covering a lot of ground to get to it. And O'Donnell. Here's Collins, having a good look around to see what's on. Now that's really stretched now, you talked about it a moment ago. The game stretched over 60 yards of the pitch now. Van Hoydonk. Here's McKinley. Trying to get past Petrich, who's uh, quite a master of the handoff. Well, I thought it was passing for a moment here, but again, that left arm of Gordon. Petrich comes out. I think the referee wasn't at the best angle to see that. But it looks like they've just decided they're both going to slug it out now. Well, as we saw at this stage in the West London derby last night, the game's here for the winning. At this point, with an hour and a little bit more gone. Donnelly. Hoydonk trying to plough through Gascoigne that takes a bit of doing that goes up against Solenko the linesman on the far side is uh, having quite a busy spell Alan Granger Collins 
chances. Celtic try to call the tune again with McKinley. Well, scooped behind by Robertson. A conversation in the middle between O'Donnell and Van Hoydonk. Maybe about positioning at this corner. Gascoigne. Loudrup. Well, it's territory that he loves to explore, particularly on the counter-attack, but Celtic just aren't letting him get away. They know if he does so, it could be at a heavy cost. They've played the Rangers two creative players very well tonight. Both Gascoigne and Loudrop I'm talking about. They haven't hit an influence again too much and for two long spells. Great Man, ball. Hold on. Great ball. It's, uh, Craftsman John Collins. McKinley. And, but it is a corner despite the efforts of Gorham to snake his arms round it in the nick of time. Well, the problem sleep below. And there's Mackay making his way in. going up, you've got a chance to put some pressure on when they get possession away. Andy, you're just having a little look to see if there's any activity on the bench. Well, I see one of the Rangers subs been called down. It will be Alec Cleland, Martin. I think it's been noticeable in the last couple of attacks that again Tosh McKinley's been able to get forward in advanced position and look to provide crosses and that may be something they're looking at. There it is. is Alec Cleland, yeah. He scored here in the league game in September in that 2-0 win. He got the first. Gascoigne covered so much ground to round up a brilliant move for the second. You and I were talking at half-time about what you would do to, to cover this and I was saying to you, well, if I was Walter Smith, I'd put Cleland on, but it, surprisingly maybe to you, I said, I'd take Salenko off, put Loudrop up front with Jury, and it gives him more balance then to cope with, well, what's, at the moment, without the goals, it's been quite a rampant Celtic. They've enjoyed lots of possession. McStay, Collins and O'Donnell have been a real threat in that midfield area. Yes, you'd be surprised if Ferguson was the one to go, even though it's his sort of position that they're trying to cover. He has the fire that Rangers need in these circumstances. But we shall see. Donnelly. Collins. Tom. Played a lot of international football, particularly... Uh, in the years when there was an East Germany. That's the area again, Mark. Look at Tosh McKinley. It's just a bit unfortunate. The ball from McStay had a little bit too much weight on it. But once again, Paul McStay spotted the runner McKinley, who was once again in. Leap forward by Petrich. Jury makes it his. But not for long, no one there be in possession for too long in a match of this intensity. Boy. Collins is Celtic. Work it down the left again. McKinley a little later on the scene this time. Didn't need to be there so early with Tom Boyd involved. But look at the progress that he's made. Oh, and that was Tom. 
and it's stayed out. Andy Gorham couldn't deal with the cross, but he was alert on his line, and this was a great angle that McKinley got to. Well, watch this for Steve. It's just instinctive. The left hand goes out, and he's still alert and alive and nimble enough to deal with the rebound. He couldn't come into the pack to deal with the cross, I don't think. But again, Rangers grateful for the ability of the goalkeeper. And Andy Gray called the substitution perfectly. Cleland for Selenko. To be fair, it's one I'd have made at half time, as I said to you. <laughs> Cullen has gone in on the right-hand side, as you would expect. McNamara takes the free kick. Here's Collins. Capable of striking the ball uh, from that type of position towards goal, but uh, Rangers recognised that and got to him quickly. So, uh, Laudrup, who's been the floater, really, in the earlier formation, is now... Uh, an out and out striker with Jury. And Ian Ferguson, as we suspected, has been kept on and is where he can apply his particular brand of fire and brimstone in the uh, centre of things, the thick of things. But we should go three for three now in the centre midfield. Collins, McStay, and O'Donnell. Marshall. against Miller, Ferguson and Gascoigne well we said it once or twice in the season possession doesn't win you football matches we've enjoyed an awful lot of it and they've played some lovely stuff at times Celtic but the most important start of all is that one in the top left it says 0-0 was very close to the jury and uh, Gordon Jury made enough of the contact to catch the referee's eye free kick with 20 minutes to go to Rangers to Gascoigne Woo. Ferguson Petrich to dink it forward, Goff attacking it, trying to loop the header over the goalkeeper who, to be fair, was pretty well positioned in the end. If it was on target, Gordon Marshall would have dealt with it, but it was a clever idea from Richard Goff. He's no stranger to finding himself in those sort of areas. Van Hoedok against McLaren. Goff was back where he was needed, twice. Collins with the flick. Celtic add to their tally of corners. The Rangers have needed the three central defenders. I think had they got in with the two, the Celtic would have found the space and exploited them. They've needed the three people. Of course, that 18-yard box plus a performance from the goalkeeper to keep the score line level. McKinley. Well, it was uh, an intervention that the crowd were calling for as uh, a penalty, but uh, the defender knew nothing about it. Well, we certainly couldn't see from here. That, whether it hits the arm, whether it hits the chest, certainly they were claiming for it from the opposite side of the ground. They definitely had the best view over there. Three. Three. McKinley. Wasting the possession, it was precious for Rangers. Jury. Here's Miller. Ferguson can keep it going for Cleland. McNamara 
chucked across to uh, make the block and Gascoigne who has it within his range of skills to uh, get a shot on target in those sort of circumstances from that extravagant <laughs> distance <laughs> missed extravagantly <laughs> and he's getting some very ironic homage being paid to him by those with the green and white draped all around them but well, that might just appeal to his uh, sense of humour Boyd Tom Mara taken from him by uh, Tom. Andres Tom again. Not panicking in possession. Collins. Donnelly. And yet again, that lion hearted, the brave heart at the back. Richard Goff for Rangers. Flag up against Loudrup. Gascoigne just rolled it through invitingly. But the invitation was also there for the official on the far side to say no. Once again close. Said in the first half, you're taking a chance when you do that. You hold your line so high. We've got the decisions at the moment. But it only takes it to get it wrong once. Boy. Mara. It's reach Van Hoydonk. But stay. Well, he doesn't get too many goals these days. That's worth a goal. Good hold up. Sets it up. Van Hoydonk. Two touches. It's there to hit first time. It was always difficult. Look at two blue jerseys right in his face. from Mackay remember it's only his fourth start at this level it's played well in fact they've all played well along the back for circuit he won't be going back to being a bank clerk for a while no. <laughs> you can bank on that <laughs> 15 minutes left what can we bank on in uh, that time still so much at stake particularly it hasn't been uh, that way for a good few years in terms of the destination of the championship. Celtic have been off the pace for too long. Desperate to get a goal here to close the gap to five points and Tommy Burns thinking about a change to try and affect that if he can. He's calling for Brian McLaughlin. very appreciative of the effort that Simon Donnelly has put in now it's the last derby of last season when Brian McLaughlin led Rangers a merry dance 3-0 at Hamden and uh, in the end I think it was he who contributed to uh, Billy Thompson the Rangers goalkeeper in that game getting sent off for bringing him down bounced off Mackay seized on by Cleland Loudrup. Mackay pleased to be able to make up for his own clumsiness, a rare moment of clumsiness. Well read, read the situation well. Saw Cleland run, just cover the hole. O'Donnell. Miller trying to pull out of the challenge in the end, but he'd done enough to incur the displeasure of the referee. Oh, Gascoigne uh, expected a bit too much of himself that didn't cost Rangers a great deal. 
but it might have done. Coming up for you at the weekend, we switch our attention to the FA Cup, sponsored by Little Woods. Highlights of Manchester United against Sunderland, another riches for you in that programme, starting at six. And our live match on the Sunday comes from the baseball ground. We begin at midday, Derby County against Leeds United, Derby County really bombing along in Division 1, and that could be a match and a half. Meaningful efforts at goal bar, Solenko's chance coming from Celtic. But it's still nil-nil. And it is what Rangers hope will be the bewitching hour. The man with the Midas touch, particularly in the old firm clashes, Ali McCoist. Getting ready for a cameo appearance. The scene is certainly set for him. So many times the scourge of Celtic in the past. Stay just gets it away. Petric has a crack himself. Marshall concerned with keeping the ball in play, really. And getting it forward quickly. And uh, quite right, the referee. Van Hoydonk was looking at McLaren, not at the ball. He's got a stature about him, Les Mottram. Maybe uh, no referee is perfect, and there's bound to be the uh, odd uh, situation where we can second-guess him with our replays up here. But I think the game has been grateful for his uh, authority. And it's not been easy being a referee in Scotland in recent times. McLaughlin. Gascoigne. Laudrup was the flagged offside. Jury is spinning around furiously, not sure who to blame, really. <laughs> Whether his teammate or the linesman or just life in general. Because there was nothing to go on in the front, the front few of Rangers, whether it's Solenko, Laudrup or Jury. It's been Celtic pressing, pressing, asking all the questions, Rangers defending and hoping to catch Celtic on the break. Spotted by the linesman. McCoist, in case you're not aware, has missed a lot of football recently with injury. That's why he's not been in from the start and not been involved earlier. that often McKinley's normally produced good crosses from when he gets in that area it was a great ball from Andreas Tom inside Alec Cleland and he had time and space this time to look up and play a good ball in well the top is back up on again Jury got to it well Miller Beginning to lose count of the number of times Brian Lauder has been caught offside. He just went a fraction early. But uh, good organisation in the back line by Celtic. Rangers falling into the trap. Boyd. Next day, good pressure on Walter Smith's side. in the end by Petric, others made it possible really by uh, making Celtic work over hard, forced the mistake. And Hoydock, McStay. Miller losing out to McStay, now Celtic have a chance here. And Hoydock, Jackie McNamara. 
Wednesday, mind racing. And by uh, Andy Gorham standards, that's a pretty uh, routine catch. And Hoydon is going to be booked for his challenge. A frank exchange of views between the players involved. The referee not uh, bothering to uh, get involved in that. He'll wait to sort it out with a notebook. Well, it is a bread and butter cross for Andy Gorham to deal with. He takes it quite comfortably and just gets nudged late. Seven minutes left. is a striker Tommy Burns clearly pondering whether to involve Walker later on Walker gets the nod in place of Andrews Tom but the Referee hadn't noticed that. The throw was taken on the far side. Jury. Well, is it going to be smash and grab from Rangers late on? They've got a corner. That's scoring running the gauntlet somewhat with the crowd, but concentrating on taking it Petric, well that's a free header totally free header he just steps back into an acre of space he's about 12 yards out he really wants to be getting that down on target look at the position Gordon Fury's got right in front of the goalkeeper Well, five minutes for Andy Walker to try and make himself a hero. And Hoydock, Walker's first touch, McLaughlin, Collins chasing, well unsure in his work. setting his wall Celtic have brought everyone back Gascoigne with a little bit of kidology Marshall wondering what to expect oh against the bar Marshall had no answer and the crossbar there came between Gascoigne and a goal and between Celtic and defeat at this late stage. Well, Gascoigne won the battle of wits with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper gets wrong and Gascoigne's three inches away from giving Rangers the win that they really haven't deserved. So, in the second half, both sides have been away fractionally O'Donnell early in this half when his effort was touched onto the post by Andy Gorham at full stretch and Paul Gascoigne's free kick full of cunning 
but not quite enough dip to make it perfect. It's a wonderful strike. Great free kick. straight to Robertson Robertson's header goes straight to McLaughlin Collins well he hasn't been able to influence the game quite as much as he might have hoped tonight John Collins But uh, Malky Mackay in particular will be very, very pleased. Unless something goes awry, as it can do for defenders late on. Just ask Queen's Park Rangers last night. McNamara. Walker was actually uh, unmarked inside him. McLaughlin. Walker! Uh, they just dropped in behind Alan McLaren who's getting a right rollicking from both golf and the goalkeeper and this is what he was brought on for ball in from McLaughlin and whereas Van Hoydonk didn't get enough on the cross coming from the other side Andy Walker just gets a little too much on it needed a fainter header, a fainter touch to direct it across Andy Gorham thoughts on the, the man of this frantic match? <laughs> well, hasn't been easy. I think for Rangers, obviously, the goalkeeper has played exceptionally well. And I think well, one of the few others that comes out with credit is the skipper, Richard Goff. I think the better performances have been from people in green and white tonight. The back four, I think, have been impeccable. All along there, McNamara, Boyd, Mackay and McKinley have all played excellently. But I just think the pick for me has been a lad I tried to sign when I was at Aston Villa's assistant manager. Midfield player, the Bills man of the match for me is Phil O'Donnell. Max Day. And again, Goff came out bravely and painfully. He stayed down. Lauter. Gascoigne. Little run away from him. But uh, his concern to get the ball out of play. Uh, Ian Ferguson was acting as a nurse and doctor to. Richard Goff, but he's got to play on now, as Celtic are doing. Ferguson almost trying to commit a foul to uh, help Goff. He couldn't even do that, and Celtic with Collins. And with the centre, the late winner in the nostrils, Van Hoydonk! Well, that's a breather, but there he is. My Bell's man of the match is Phil O'Donnell. He came so close. Time very nearly up. Well, he's in a couple of headers, Pierre Van Hoydonk. And neither of them have had enough power to really trouble Andy Gorham. Not easy headers. He's always been under pressure. He was under pressure from McLaren. He was backing away from the ball. Difficult to get sufficient power. But this is the injury here. He's golf once again fully committed and there you see him reach for the left ankle but he's played a captain's part today well he's well into his 30s now Richard Goff but there's no sign of his uh, talent diminishing or his appetite for the fray let it be said nice touch there well, the gap between two great Glaswegian rivals stays at eight points. Celtic still two games in hand. No goals, but Phil O'Donnell came so close early in the second half. Andy Gorham with a number of outstanding saves, turning that one onto a post. Paul Gascoigne in the closing minutes, wrapping Gordon Marshall's crossbar. 
a draw just as it was at Ibrox in November and indeed in the New Year's fixture last season. Both sides enjoying exceptional seasons, but neither could win the extra big points on offer tonight. Final score, nil-nil. We'll be back after the break. Phil, given Celtic's contribution to this match tonight, how disappointed are you that you've had to share the points? Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but um, I think both teams had chances. Uh, both goalkeepers made good saves. Uh, as I said, I don't know what we're going to have to do to beat this man. That's twice he's had two great saves against us. But um, we're still in there challenging, so that was the main thing after tonight. Well, the save he had from you at the start of the second half was nothing short of magnificent. Did you feel you had scored then? Yeah, I thought I'd scored, but... Um, even when he got the touch, I thought it was going to get off the post, but it was just unfortunate. And then it felt to one of their players as well when it came back off the post. But that's football for you. Andy, is this a result that Rangers would have settled for before the game? Well, the way we've played the uh, last few games, obviously it's nice not to get beat. But at the same time, I think both teams wanted to win it, just to prove a point. Um, like you said, both of us have had saves to make with all our chances. Gaz hit a bar. So I suppose it was fair in the end, but... Only one old firm match left now in the season and that's at Ibrox. Do you feel Rangers are now in control of this championship? It's never over now, it's, it's only halfway through the season. Um, I wish it was back at Park Eddington, we've got a better record here than we have at Ibrox. But it's everything to play for now, um, it looks like it's just the two of us. So it's, it's going to be a, a good end to the season. Phil, you haven't won the three points tonight but you have won the Bells man of the match and with that goes the champagne. Perhaps you'll present that Andy? Well done lads. Walter, well, Celtic haven't closed the gap at all tonight. How pleasing is that? Well, that's the most pleasing part about the performance tonight. We just worked hard tonight. I felt, you know, we've played better football in recent games than we did do tonight. But it was a tense game, very nervous game, um, as they always are. So we are the team, I think, that's maybe got the advantage in terms of not dropping any more points than we did do. And I think the draw suits us probably better than Celtic. Did you come here tonight with the intention of making sure you didn't lose? No, I don't know. That was never the intention. I have came here right enough and uh, surprising fact we've not lost a goal in three games here so that was pleasing but uh, when you look at the performance of Richard Goff in the middle of our defence well you know you look at the answer to that one so I think that uh, you know we're pleased with the point and it keeps us top of the league and it puts a little bit more pressure on Celtic's two games in hand now where you know they must go and win them Did you feel you had snatched the game at the death when Paul Gascoigne hit the bar with the free kick? Well, it was one of these games where I felt we had a few opportunities in the game to maybe play the ball through better than we did. And I felt that you know the through runner might have caused a wee bit more problem than it ended up doing. But when uh, Paul gets opportunities up and around the box, I wasn't surprised when it happened. And just a wee bit unfortunate it didn't go under the bar. That's 17 games now, 17 league games without defeat for Rangers. Do you feel now that you have a real momentum going? Well, we, we do feel we get that momentum going. I'm disappointed a wee bit of the way we play tonight. I feel we can play better football than we did this evening. But in saying that, you know, Celtic's motivation to stop Rangers winning the championship is always going to be a great thing. And, uh, you know, they're up for a game tonight and uh, made it very difficult for us to play in the manner in which we have been doing. Thanks, Walter. Thanks, David. Tommy, do you feel that's a Celtic performance that might have earned you more? Well, I think that, Davey. I think, you know, we asked the boys before like, the game tonight to go and, and push themselves a wee bit further than what they have been doing recently. And I think, to be fair to them, you know, they've, they've dominated the game uh, against a very good side. Uh, we've come off 18 days of rest and the players have been out there. You know, they've dominated the game. They've put Rangers under pressure at every opportunity. We've played a lot of good football. Uh, and Andy Goldman made some remarkable saves. But uh, I can't fault any Celtic player tonight. I thought they were absolutely magnificent. Uh, we're single out our goalkeeper Gordon Marshall in particular who had two days of sickness and diarrhoea but, but desperate to play so we've got to take our hat, our hat off to him but to, uh, over the piece well, I'm very very pleased with the, the performance the way the guys went about their business 
Uh, and we come away tonight still very much in contention, and that's what it's all about for us. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you, Davey.